Hey everyone, Karan here from Tech Trips, and today we are looking at the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus. Before we get into this review, why don't we look at the quick unboxing that I did when I bought this phone. So now that we have gone through the unboxing, we are going to talk a little bit about this phone that I have over here. Now this is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus. It only comes with one variant in India, that is 128 GB of uh, memory and along with 8 GB of RAM. Now along with that you get four cameras over here as you can see along with the LED flash and a microphone also over here. Now it's a whole host of microphones. Plus you get this single camera over here and you get these beautiful edges over here that are properly metallic and shimmering plus this glass bag which is a gorilla glass and really reflective as you can see plus the screen also being really reflective as you can see. When this came out about a few months ago this was the most bezel -less screen that you could have on a phone along with a sonic display sonic fingerprint uh, in display scanner which was again a game, supposed to be a game changer uh, it wasn't the fastest in this so that really proved not to be that big a game changer but nonetheless it at least doesn't shine a beam of light in your fingers every time you want to open your screen so that was a great thing I feel that this phone is basically one of the best uh, smartphones that you can buy at a really good value. Right now, if you want to pick this up at, uh, from Flipkart, you can get this for 55000 But at least for a period of one month, this phone was being sold at 49999 At that price, this phone becomes a steal of a deal. I was using, for a period of less than a month, a phone called Asus ROG 3. I was really disappointed with it. You should have my link somewhere on the top of how what my experience with that was. But prior to that, I was using my Samsung Galaxy S9 uh, non-plus variant for a period of two years. In fact, slightly more than two years. Uh, I used it for two years, two months. Now, my experience with that phone was really good. But I didn't want to jump into the Galaxy uh, Samsung Galaxy S uh, bandwagon for two distinct reasons. And uh, those still hold slightly true even right now one poor battery life no matter what samsung phone you use number two poor uh poor performance of the exynos chip that they have that held true when the galaxy s9 was there and that holds true even more now because the snapdragon chip is just so much better than this not just in terms of performance performance i'll say that they both are like okay this is like slightly behind but it really doesn't make much of a difference what makes a difference is that the exynos chip gets drastically more hotter not i mean yeah significantly more hotter not that it'll burn your hand but like it gets more hotter what that translates into is more thermal throttling when you are doing really heavy performing task on a regular basis uh, although I haven't had that problem because I have been using this only for one whole week and I have not done too much of heavy tasking but I have also edited some 4k videos that I recorded from here and I've done some good 4k uh, video recording I just recorded my uh, 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 a review of a product right now with this phone uh, in 4k for at least 18 minutes and it did not throttle at all and it did not heat up but you can feel slightly more heating up 
than the uh, X, than the than the Snapdragon series, and that is that holds true even when you're holding it, you can feel that slight warmness. And the battery life, of course, because it gets hotter, it becomes less efficient, so it sucks out more battery. The the problem with the battery life is not just the screen on time or anything, but the um, the standby time is really the culprit over here. Now. As we are in the discussion of the battery, I use this phone always at 120 Hz because Asus ROG kind of spoiled me. If I had not used the Asus ROG, I might have stuck with the 60 Hz, but there is a significant amount of difference. Let me just show you what do I mean by significant amount of difference. Now, motion smoothness is at high, so it's really good, right? Let's go to standard. I'm very sure that you really can't see much of a difference right now. But trust me when I tell you, uh, it lags. It just lags and lags. It, it just doesn't feel that smooth anymore. Now, once you get into high with 120 Hz goodness, wow, yeah. I mean, just trust me, guys, the difference is palpable. You can notice it instantly. From that, let's get into more in depth of the screen. I think, I don't think, I know for a fact, when I move from Galaxy S9 to the Asus ROG 3, the major reason why I left that phone was because of the display. That was the major reason. It had a terrible display, just terrible. Asus probably picked the worst display they could find and just overclock it to 144 Hz for you to just view it. But once I got back to this, it's just to my heart's content. I'm willing to be okay with anything that Samsung does if this is a display that they have. So what are the reasons for me to actually stick to this phone? One is the display. Second is the sound quality. Let me show you what do I mean by that. Now, what it does is it basically acts as a front firing speaker, this one, the front grill, and then you got this bottom most port. This basically acts as your front uh, one. Now let's just put some music, any music in, in, in CS. quality is really good in this why do i feel that because it just doesn't crack on the high volumes and it's pretty consistent on the left and on the right you can you hear pretty much similar sort of sound coming so which is really good otherwise generally the bottom ones are generally much more louder but in this you can really make that distinction between left and right which is really good now uh battery is something which i'm not very keen on but that is pretty evident uh, I don't expect that from a Samsung phone. Now, the screen was one. Second is the software that you use. I didn't realize how much I'm going to miss Samsung UI once I did not have that. It's pretty straightforward. If I want to, if I want to calculate when I'm on a different screen, probably, you know, let's say I am here, uh, whatever this screen I'm over here, I want to do some calculation. Now just swipe from the right and here we go. You have a full calculating machine with you. Minus 21. Yeah. And there you go. You have your full calculations going on over here. You have a full calendar over here, full calendar widget where you can see your calendar date. You have a to-do list where you can manage your to-do. And then here you have all your apps that you want to use specifically. And this is all your recent apps that you can access. 
you really don't know how much you're going to miss it once you can't use it anymore. And this thing, yeah, gallery that you can just use so easily. So these are a few things that you really miss, that picture-on-picture -picture window. Uh, the screens are really big, right? It's a 5.7-inch screen, quad HD, a full HD when you're using 120Hz like I am, but it really doesn't matter. Just use the higher refresh rate one. So, and plus it's HDR10 certified. So, you know, why don't you use the whole screen? Now, these are some of the reasons. And I just like the Samsung UI much better. The colors are so much better. I, I am used to all of this. And once I did not use Samsung UI, I just realized that how much I really missed it. I've, I'm not that much fond of the Asus UI that they have. It's a bare bones stock UI, but I was not a fan of it. So once you're shifting from there, you really realize. So the first reason why I want this phone is because of the display. Second reason is because of the software interface that we have. Now, sound quality, yes, it's there, but then there are other phones that can deliver that to you. Asus had slightly even better sound than this, but uh, this completely works because it, the other things are such better. Now, the third thing that I really want this phone is, which is important to me, is the camera. Now, camera is one thing. User interface is the other thing. The third is the camera quality. And I'm not talking about the number of cameras that are there because you can put n number of cameras and that would not make this camera any better or any worse. So I took some shots. And uh, this is in night, 10 o'clock. And just look at the quality of the pictures that it takes. Just look at it. I mean, you can just make out that the camera is just something. I was really hungry and I wanted to get a snack so I took this photograph. I mean, yeah, it's just amazing. And here are some photos during the night. Let me... Now this is during complete night. So this is at around two o'clock with a little bit of decoration done for Diwali and all that. And these, this photo was taken. Again, this is all like, this is like really night time, like around two-ish or something. And this was again at two o'clock. This was with the wide angle lens. Even the wide angle lens captures it so nicely. Imagine night mode. Look at this again, another wide angle captured photo. The photos it takes are, was another thing that I really wanted to look at. Now, let me try to get into some day shots actually. Now, here are some day shots that I took today morning. This is a picture of my plants that I have in the day. And just look at the quality and the detail. I mean, I can just keep on zooming. And it feels as if the photos just melt in the screen. And yes, yeah, those photos were in between were just WhatsApp images. Yeah. As you can see, the images are really good. Yeah, nice macro with really good bokeh. There's again some night photography. Again, this is with literally no light. This was around 11 o'clock. And you can see how the quality really comes up. This was in a departmental store. Something called the in and out that we have in Delhi. And you can see the images that came here. Again, really, really, really good. Another one. Similar example. Let me put this in landscape.
and generally this is how this is, this is the wide angle lens again another nice photography so generally this is how you will always have you will always have really good experiences with this camera now there's another thing that is called multi mode what this does is it'll take around 10 seconds you aim it you walk around a little bit and it'll take nice snippets uh, in different uh, ways it'll take some nice images in black and white and mosaic in different ways and it'll give you a nice compilation of images i thought i would not use this but i use this more often than i would like to admit it yeah so really good front camera i'll say is not the best this is a photograph photograph from the front camera i feel that it makes your face blurred a little bit it it it, it hides the details it softens the image a little bit but that is okay that is fine now there were two very uh, there were two things which i had said that is really not good about this uh, phone and one is the battery life and the other is the processor processor i'm fine with it i can live with it but how that impacts the battery is something that is bad i am using this at 60 hertz i'm oh, sorry 120 hertz uh, at full uh, full motion proper uh, smoothness and at 1080p so this really sucks the battery dry my phone generally lasts between 12 to 16 hours of maximum time because i am i use my phone really heavily i i generally get about five and a half to around five and a half to six hours of screen on time um on on the worst days like when i'm um, on a lot of calls i can say four or 45 minute or five hours and going up to six hours on a really good day. Uh, if I bring it down to 60 hertz and and quad HD, my battery life instantly goes up to between six and a half hours to seven hours of battery uh, of screen on time, and giving me up to uh, 17 hours or 18 hours of uh, a whole day of 17, 18 hours of day of usage. So, is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it to you know. Uh, do if you really want battery life but if you want that smooth 60 hertz display panel which by the way you can't even get on the latest apple iphone you want to use that no matter what this is truly at 50,000 or even at 55,000 this is truly the best phone you can buy right now there is no better phone right now you don't buy the oneplus don't buy anything if you want the snapdragon 845 you want those extra goodness you want that extra frame rates in your game why not go ahead for it but otherwise if you're not really a gamer and you're fine with the samsung phone this is the best phone to buy right now and by the way it's better than the s20 ultra that is just a bulky piece of uh, phone that you have with additional camera modules that actually shakes uh, it actually wiggles when you shake it and uh, it's just really big really really big uh, and it has some focus hunting issues as well so guys what do you think of my review it was a pretty lengthy one i don't know how much i could cover but it was just a rant and just a review that i wanted to get off my chest about this phone hope you like this review and hope this helped you my brother has just found, bought the new iphone 12 so i'm going to do a quick comparison also between that he's bought the iphone 12 pro so you know maybe i'll do a head-to-head -head comparison maybe tomorrow or day after let me know what you think guys thank you so much for watching see you in the next one
I'm so happy. 